is The Simp, and I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real star of today's show is the IE Keys USB simulator shifter that is being sold on Amazon by EK Smart. This is a standalone H pattern shifter that is plug and play, and I am seeing this appear on more and more rigs. So I look at pictures of people's rigs throughout our, our world, I see more and more of this almost, let's call it generic, they even in the naming, USB simulator shifter. It is desperately seeking or needing a better name that does come in two different variations. You can get it in black or white. I have the white or it kind of looks a little bit silver here. And it also comes in six different models or variations. They start out at about 90 bucks for a six or seven speed plus reverse shifter as well as coming with options that include the sequential shifter adapter and even an external switch which would be great for like reverse or high-low in trucking simulators. Any of those variations might build the cost up to about $120, so somewhere between $90 and $120 total price depending on which variation you pick on this shifter. All in all, that is a very reasonable price for an H pattern shifter. So one added note that I do want to make is this is a USB plug and play PC only shifter. It will not work on any of your console systems. Now when I look at this shifter on Amazon where it is being sold, they say that it is compatible with Thrustmaster and Launch Attack wheels. Now in reality, and this is part of that added note as well, it actually is a standalone shifter. So. They are really talking about it being at that same tier or level when talking compatible. It's not that it literally works with those wheels, but that it's really targeted for people who are using the Logitech or Thrustmaster shifters or wheel sets. But again, we are talking about a mostly made of metal H pattern shifter for only a hundred bucks. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at the USB simulator shifter. And as you can see, it is mostly made of metal. And in the case that I received, it is the white model, which does have a slight silver coloring to it. The outer casing is a piece of boxed aluminum that is connected to a mounting plate that is of the same color. At the top of the box is a thin plastic or plexi type top plate that has gates cut into it to guide the shifter arm. Depending on the model you ordered, it would either have a 6 plus 1 or 7 gates or the 7 plus 1 8 gate version of the shifter. You can see the gates are cut in a shark fin shape to help guide the arm through the gates in the natural shifting pattern. Extending out from the gates is the stainless steel shifter arm that is threaded at the top with M8 threads to hold a shifter knob. At the very top of the shifter arm is a black 50mm round ball shifter knob made of plastic. Coming out of the front side, or I guess it could be the back side, depending on the way you mounted the shifter, is a 55 inch or 1400 millimeter long USB cord, which is probably long enough, but we can always use a longer cord when it comes to our accessories. Now, the overall dimensions, the box itself is about three and a half inches or 89 millimeters wide in both directions and is four inches or 102 millimeters tall. The mounting plate on the bottom is the same width but it is 5 and 1 8 inch or 131 millimeters long. There are channels cut into each side of the mounting plate that are about 3 inches or 76 millimeters wide, and those channels end up being about 4 and a quarter or 105 millimeters apart going front to back. There are also a couple of threaded holes on the bottom that are centered on the shifter. These threaded holes are about 1 and a half inches or 38 millimeters apart. The shifter knob stands about four and a half inches or 114 millimeters above the top of the metal box, taking the overall height to eight and a half inches or 216 millimeters. And again, the shifter knob is a round black ball that measures in at 50 millimeters. Before we move on to mounting the shifter, I want to talk about the way it engages while I can still sit here and handle it. It's actually a pretty cool design. Each gate at the end of the gate has a little micro switch. So like many shifters, as soon as the arm touches that micro switch, you get the engagement of the gear. What you have for resistance is you do have spring tension. It's a light spring tension, but it is significant at the same time, going left to right through the neutral gate. When it comes to going into the gates, and I'm just gonna work the three, four, which is straight up and down on this shifter. What it does, you hear that pop into gear. And it's pretty significant, especially when comparing it to its counterparts, a Logitech shifter, a Thrustmaster shifter, 
any other $100 shifter that's giving you an H pattern. So you can see it is a pretty significant clunk up into gear and out of gear. What you have going on is a set of bearings, ball bearings inside of there that are waiting and they are spring loaded. And so when the shifter goes through those ball bearings, as they spread apart to go around that shaft, it actually goes against spring tension and it gives you a really good click in all eight, in this case, shifters positions. When it comes to mounting the shifter, it is pretty easy and it does come with hardware for most scenarios I can think of, but you've got these mounting sliders here and then you've got bolts that you can just go through these sliders right into the rig, comes with nuts for those bolts. You also, those bottom screws that we talked about, they're threaded and it comes with bolts that'll go right into those. So it's a matter of just lining these holes up with something on your rig or drilling holes in the dimensions I let you know. Or in the case of a wood rig, you could just put it down and put four wood screws into it and it'd be all set. In the case of my RC, I actually had holes that lined up with the threaded holes perfectly and I was able to perfectly hard mount it onto my rig for a real stable connection. And from there, it's just plugging the shifter into the computer. And as I mentioned, it is a plug and play shifter. So you plug it into Windows, it recognizes it as a joystick or a device, and it's ready to go. You just have to map the gates into each game and it will be operational. All right, now that we've covered all of the details, you know all of the facts or everything you need to know about this shifter, let's talk about how it performs on track because that is what it is really all about. Now let's start off with, and I already mentioned that, 3-4 gate. That is where you want a shifter to rest. That is the most common shift in sim racing and that is where it sits. So let's talk about that. So with it sitting in that natural position, if you just push it up, it'll go into third and if you just pull it down, it'll go into fourth. The tension in the up and down direction is light when compared to high end shifters, but stronger and more rigid feeling than shifters that are found on a Logitech wheel. There is a clunk or engagement point that is felt when moving the arm into gear. The up and down movement in third and fourth is smooth, comfortable, and feels pretty solid considering the price point. When pushing the shifter arm into first gear, the tension going to the left is also light to medium weight and tension. And then when pushing forward, you are met with that same resistance or clunk into gear. Revving the engine, building up speed, and shifting into second begins with that release clunk coming out of first that immediately turns into the engagement clunk of being down into second gear. In either scenario, it is very clear that the shift occurred, but I really don't feel the micro switch inside, just that slight engagement clunk. The shift to third is a little more challenging. The springs are pulling the shifter arm back to that 3-4 gate. However, if you push just a little too hard, it can jump into that fifth, sixth gear gate. I found a slower, more methodical approach at first to help over time. As I got used to the tension of the centering spring and the spacing of the gates, those mischiefs happen much less frequently. I also found that if I just push the shifter out of second, it will go right into the center gate and then with a slight push forward, it'll give me third gear. The 3-4 shift we already talked about, and the shift from 4th to 5th has you fighting the spring tension to get to the next gate to the right, and then the same mechanism for the clunk into gear. But the big difference between this and going into the first second gate is that there is no wall preventing you from going one more gate into the 7 reverse gate. It just takes some practice. The rest of the shifting plays out pretty much in the same way, including downshifting, but in the reverse direction. The model I got was the 7 plus 1 for reverse. For me, the 7th gate is pretty much not needed and I might 3D print a blocker of sorts to prevent me from shifting into it. The bottom side of that final gate to the right is for reverse in conventional setups and there is no detent or push down or any extra action preventing you from hitting this gear. If the arm goes into that 8th or final gate, the mapped button will be engaged. Overall, I was very happy with the shifter and the way it operates. At first, I had some missed shifts, which is to be expected, and quite honestly, the downside of manual shifting and racing. Over time, as I did more driving, it became more of a second nature and performed consistently and definitely added to the immersion and realism of sim racing. 
that pretty much tells you everything that you need to know about the IE keys USB simulator shifter, but just to make things perfectly clear, let's go ahead and break it down with the good, the not so good, and the bottom line, starting off with the good, and that being, this is the least expensive H pattern shifter that I've tested. Mostly made of metal. Took some abuse. Plug and play. Replaceable knob. Easy hard mount. Comes in black or white. Added realism of an H pattern shifter. Low profile. Doesn't take up much space. And now on to the not so good. It is a little lightweight in spring tension or resistance. Would like a slightly longer cord. No detent for reverse. And now onto the bottom line, starting off with getting back to the not so good list and that first item being lightweight tension. It is lightweight tension when comparing it to high end shifters. There's no doubt about it. However, it is more robust. It is a more firm shift feeling than say like a launch attack shifter or I even say the TH8A Thrustmaster shifter. I think this feels a little bit more firm and it shifts and at a hundred bucks, that's really darn good. I'd also like to go back to that topic at the beginning of the show, talking about it being a standalone shifter, because again, when you're on Amazon and you look at the marketing, it definitely implies that this would work with or is compatible with that Logitech or Thrustmaster base, and it doesn't plug into the base. It isn't truly compatible with it. Again, is just more matched. It's, it's suited to go with those type of wheels at that price point. So and again, when we're talking about spring tension, we're talking about expectations of an H pattern shifter, that's what we're really comparing it to. We're not even comparing it to like a Fanatic shifter at $250. It's in a completely different league. So we are keeping things realistic for the price point that it is set to. And with that, I think it's a great shifter, especially with that external switch. This would be a great shifter, especially for like American truck or Euro truck simulator where you're gonna need be more gears than you're gonna see in a car. Having that reverse switch could be used as your lockout mechanism. So if you didn't like that it didn't have a detent or anything blocking or restricting reverse, you could use that switch. Like maybe I have to hold the switch while putting it into gear. That would be very realistic as well. Now I did mention the mounting options, which are pretty, pretty good. You have a few different ways to go. They do also make an L shaped clamp or adapter, but that thing ends up being 50 bucks, which is half the cost of the shifter. So there is no clamp it on a desk mount without going that route. And that does raise the price quite significantly. And the last thing I'd really like to touch upon before we bring this to a close is the topic of H pattern shifters. You know, is this shifter going to make you faster for the most part? No, no, it will not. Uh, if you've not used an H pattern shifter in a simulator, it is going to add new elements that could go wrong. It's You can miss shift and blow an engine. You pretty much can't do that with paddle shifters without really making an error, <laughs> a massive error as a driver. So uh, it will not necessarily make you faster. However, there are a few cars, there are a few scenarios where a, a, a skilled driver who can really match the RPM to the moment and the shifting moment and do the right blip can actually get more performance out of the car. And I would certainly argue that they're more in sync with the machine, maybe feeling everything that it's doing. So there are things that to the right driver you maybe actually could be faster. But for the most part, an H pattern is not gonna make you faster. And that's also why we've seen cars go to originally just a up and down sequential and then eventually move on to even paddle shifters. So you're seeing paddle shifters at lower and lower and lower tiers of racing and cars every year. And it's really getting to the point where an H pattern will be almost obsolete in racing, almost obsolete in automotive. You might see it stick around in trucks, but I could even see trucks going to new modern automatic transmission. So it is sort of the dinosaur of racing in general, the H pattern shifter. But for so many racers out there, it is one of those things that just adds so much authenticity to the experience of racing, so much realism to racing, and really so much more immersion, getting back to that how in tune with the machine you can be as a driver when you're getting those blips, you're getting those 
those RPMs matched to the downshift and keeping the car working at 100% efficiency at all times. And it can be rather fun as well. So I think that tells you everything you need to know about this little USB simulator shifter. You can check it out for yourself at amazon.com. It is sold by EK Smart. They are the same people who make that very well-known USB generic handbrake as well so they do have a little experience in sim racing and one of those companies bringing you you know semi-generic but very affordable sim racing product so i hope you've enjoyed this show if you have be sure to give it a thumbs up if you want to know when our next review comes out you be sure to subscribe to the channel and most of all thank you for watching this is the sim pit i'm sean cole and i'll see you on the track